Hi there guys, welcome to another video here at Buddy's Academy. I am Buddy and I hope that you are all doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Geographic Information System, right? It is commonly known as GIS. And we are going to be going through some of the main aspects that you will find in your exam paper. We are going to be taking a look at what is the accepted definition of GIS. We are going to be looking at the four main components of GIS. Another thing that they like to ask you is what are the advantages of GIS over your traditional paper maps? We're going to be taking a look at that. We are going to be looking at important concepts such as remote sensing, data integration, things that are commonly asked in the exam. And then we are going to be ending off with a past paper question so that you can see exactly how they would ask the questions in the GIS section. So what is the accepted definition for GIS? GIS is a system for gathering, storing, analyzing, and displaying spatial and geographic data. Now, if you look at the definitions, you can see these four keywords, gathering, storing, analyzing, and displaying spatial and geographic data. Now, these four keywords are extremely important because a person that is marking your paper, they will look out for these four keywords. And if you do have these four keywords, then your answer will be marked right. If you don't have these four keywords, then it's going to be marked wrong. So in order to help us to remember these, let's look at this diagram. So first, you will have to gather the information. You will then have to store the information. You will then have to analyze it and you will display it. So just keep an eye out for these four gathering, storing, analyzing and displaying. Your definition will have to include those four. So there are four components of GIS. Your first being your software, second will be your hardware, third will be your data, and the fourth will be your user. Now what are each of these components? What do they mean? What do they comprise of? The first will be your software. Now software will be the computer programs that will store, analyze, and display geographic information. Now they won't ask you what are the specific software options, but they will ask you what is software. And you will have to give this information for that. You then look at your hardware. This will include the physical devices that are used to collect, store, and process geographic data. Now, what will this comprise of? What will, if they ask you what are the components of hardware, what will you say? You will say computers, printers, GPS devices, scanners, and other related equipment necessary for capturing and handling spatial data. Now, if they ask you for two components of your hardware, the best two answers that you could possibly give will be computers and printers, as those are the main two components of your hardware. We then look at the third component of GIS, which will be data. And these are observations made from monitoring the real world. Now, how can data be collected? It can be collected from various sources, including field surveys, remote sensing, and existing databases. Now, as we can see, these last two, remote sensing and databases, they are important concepts and they could even ask you to define these concepts. So we will explain that in the next few slides. The fourth component will be the user. Now what is the user? The user will be any person that will use GIS. Now two examples of that will be town planners and meteorologists, right? A very common question that they could ask you is what role will people play in GIS? So there are four possible options that you could give. The first will be people will collect data. People will then manipulate the data and process this information. And the third option will be people will then use this information and develop GIS programs. So if you are asked this question, what role do people play in GIS? The best possible option that you could give will be people will manipulate and process this information. Another common question will be, who uses GIS? So the first will be urban and town planners. Now, why will they use GIS? Like, why do town planners use GIS? They will use it to design urban infrastructure, manage land use, analyze the impact of development, and plan sustainable cities. Now, they won't ask you, why will these people use GIS? They will just ask you, who will use GIS? All right, I just added this information so that you know exactly why they will use it. So the second type of person that will use your GIS will be your environmental scientists and conservationists. 
They will use it to monitor environmental changes, manage natural resources, track wildlife populations, and plan conservation efforts. If they are to ask you what are the advantages of using GIS over paper maps, what would you say? Now let's think about it carefully. A paper map could tear, it could be outdated, it could also take a very long time to use it, right? Because you may not know how to interpret this information. So there are four possible options that you could use as your answer. The first will be GIS will be faster and more efficient. The second will be GIS will require less time and money to use. GIS will be more durable than paper maps. Remember, paper maps could tear. And then we can also say GIS can cope with large amounts of data. We then get to the important definitions that they could ask you. And the first definition will be remote sensing. Now, what is remote sensing? This will be capturing data on an object from a distance. Now, what does that actually mean? That is the process of collecting data about the Earth's surface without direct contact. This typically is done through the use of satellites or an aircraft equipped with sensors. So let's say we want to gather data or information about a village. So we will fly a plane with a sensor under it over this village, and that's how we will capture the information about this village, right, without direct contact. We then look at database. What is data a database? This is a structured collection of data that is stored and accessed electronically. In GIS, a database is used to store and manage spatial and attribute data, enabling efficient querying, updating, and analysis. And what would you do if they ask you what is data? Data is information that is collected and used for analysis. In the context of GIS, data refers to both spatial data, geographical locations, and your attribute data. Now, what is attribute data? This will be descriptive information about spatial features. We then get to spatial data. So this is data that represents the physical location and shape of geographic features and the relationships between them. It will include information about the positions, the coordinates, and can be represented in forms such as points, lines, and polygons. What is attribute data? This is data that describes words, numbers, and pictures. Vector data. This is a type of spatial data that represents geographic features using points, lines, and polygons. Vector data is useful for representing discrete features such as roads, boundaries, and landmarks. We then get to raster data. This is a type of spatial data that represents geographic features using a grid of cells or pixels. Each cell has a value representing information such as elevation or land cover. Raster data is useful for continuous data such as satellite imagery and elevation models. We then have data acquisition. This is the process of collecting or obtaining data for use in GIS. This can include field surveys, remote sensing, GPS data collection, and acquiring data from existing databases or other sources. Resolution is another common question that they could ask you. They could ask you to define the term resolution. And you would simply say that this will refer to the degree of clarity of an image. We then have data integration. You will see this in the past paper question that we'll go through. And this will be combining different types of data on a single map. Buffering. This is a line used to demarcate an area around a spatial feature. And our last concept today will be data manipulation. This is the process of adjusting, modifying, or transforming data to make it more suitable for analysis. In GIS, data manipulation can include editing spatial and attribute data, converting data forms, cleaning data to remove errors, and combining data sets to prepare for further analysis. We will now answer this simple past paper question. There's nothing too complicated about it. And in the sketch below, we can see it says A, and it is pointing to a person that is using GIS. We can see they are taking two different maps and they are combining it into one. So what is that known as? That is known as data integration. So let us look at our first question, 3.3.4. 
Identify the GIS component at A. So what component is this? This will obviously be your user. Therefore, we can see the answer will be user. 3.3.5. Give one reason why the GIS component, which is the answer to 3.3.4. So basically, why is the user important? We have already gone through this in the previous slide. The answer to 3.3.5 will be that the user will manipulate the data and they will make it useful. And this will give you two marks. 3.3.6. Data integration is illustrated in the sketch. As you can see, they're taking two maps and they're combining it into one. So give one reason to support your statement. So what can we say? We will say that different maps were integrated into one map. And again, that will give you two marks. We then see the last question. Define the term buffering. So as I have said before, buffering will be a line that is used to demarcate an area around a spatial feature. So the correct answer will be buffering is a line used to demarcate an area around a spatial feature. And that is it. It's extremely simple. There's nothing too complicated about it. And we are now at the end of the video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a like and subscribe. It will literally take you less than seven seconds and it is completely free. If you want to see more videos, then please let me know what type of videos you would like to see, what subjects you would like to see me cover, what topics you would like to see me cover. And till the next one, all the best if you are writing your exam soon. I want to wish you all the best. May God bless each and every single one of you. And yeah, thank you again for watching. Goodbye.